Hi, atop of Florida's peninsula at 108 feet. This is Alpha Mike, and you are listening to episode 195 on Radar Cop Podcast. Today's episode, Three Fingers Brown. We are entering the Wise Guys series. We are back, and we are specifically talking about Thomas Lucchese, better known as Three Fingers Brown, and we'll explain where you where and how he got that name. How do you contact us? Well, it's simple. RaiderCop.com. You can hear all our podcasts from 1 to 195. And RaiderCop Nation will let you go to the official website of the podcast where you get more information, news, and you can also see uh, our old archive shows, future shows, and a lot more. So we encourage you to do that, as well as the infamous social media. We've gone through the list. We're not going to bore you with the same list, but Parlor is back, and we are back on there. And you can find us on Parlor at Raider Cop. That's our handle, Raider Cop. And we'd love to see you there. We got about uh, six or seven hundred people. So we were doing good until the uh, Bolsheviks decided to pull the plug on Parler. But we are back. And we encourage you to hook up with us there. What are we going to talk about today? Wise Guys series. It's back up. It's one of our biggest uh, trends on this podcast. People like to hear about Wise Guys. So we have one. But on a personal note, it is a little bit of a difficult show for me to put together. Um, 2020 was a difficult year, as many of the nation knows. My dad passed away August 5th after a almost three-year battle with cancer. And um, at, at the age of 86, my aunt, recently passed away three weeks ago at, I believe, the age of 83. And she passed away as a result of COVID-19, but mostly due because of the fact that she had a surgical procedure done prior. And just uh, a couple of days ago, my grandmother at the age of 102, just shy of 103, which would was uh, her birthday in April. So right around the corner, she was just shy of 103. Now, they had originally gotten COVID-19 through the medical nurse that attended my grandmother at home and uh, gave that the coronavirus to my grandmother, two aunts, uncle, and cousin. And um, my aunt didn't make it. And after probably, I would say, three or four week battle, my grandmother at 102, just shy of 103, passed away too. So as a result, and I'll kind of make another announcement on the next podcast, the uh, show for Saturday, the 24th, 27th, I believe it is, uh, with Thomas Wall. That's going to be a little bit on on delay because I've got to travel, go, go down to Miami for the funeral and then come back up. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a slight delay, but it'll be out the following day instead of being launched on Saturdays. This Sat- that Saturday will be launching on Sunday. Remember, we launch Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. So, but this specific episode that I'm talking about will prob- will go out uh, a day later, but it will go out. And remember, 
March, not March, uh, May, sorry, I got my M's mixed up. We go back to twice a week. So we went from once a week, three times a week, and now we're going to settle in on twice a week. And that will be Sundays, late Sunday, and Wednesdays will be our launching dates. And it's a lot of work three weeks, folks. It is a lot of work. And with this tragedy just happened, eh, now I'm behind schedule. I was ahead of schedule and behind schedule. So you can imagine. So I thank you for your your understanding and patience on that. Um, a lot of people during this season, so many crazy things happening to us in the world, but this issue with COVID and people dying, a lot of death, 2020, 2021, death, confusion. Nobody knows left from right anymore. Who's a politician? Who's not a politician? Who won? Who didn't win? Who should I vote for? It is a troubled time, but the scripture has told us about it. And we need to stay focused on ourselves, most importantly, not necessarily the country. And I know it's important to be, you know, your civic duty and keep a a visual on the country. I'm not saying to abandon the country. But in these times of uh, health and craziness, you need to think about yourself, that you are safe, that you are healthy, and that you are blessed. So you got to get that spiritual upgrade as well. We uh, send our continued prayer prayers uh, for healing on the cop, as well as Wonder Woman that went under the knife recently as well. Minor surgery, she's out of it, and she is doing well. But a prayer here and there never hurt nobody, so we encourage you guys to keep our co-host in prayer. Things happen. We live in a dynamic society that we have to be prepared for anything at any time. The importance of why we, when we transfer over in May and we start doing our twice a week programming, we are going to do our continuation of the word. It will be called AWOL Monday, being launched on Sunday evenings into Monday. And we'll have at least one or two of those a month and and the importance of it is because, you know, you can train, educate yourself, get yourself ready for things that happen in life, for your job, of shooting, target practice, whatever it is. But if there's an absence of the living God in your life, everything you're doing is in vain. Because without the co-pilot, without the pilot, you as the co-pilot cannot navigate correctly. And so you need to be connected to that pilot through the spiritual connection. And for us, it's praise, worship, Bible, prayer, fasting, all those ingredients. But most importantly, believing there is a God and that that God came in the form of flesh like me and you and died on a cross for us and our sins today episode 195 we talk about three fingers brown how he got that name and much more on the lucchese crime family the father of the lucchese crime family and now it is time for the Word of the Week. And today we feature on the Word of the Week. Turn your Bibles to Matthew 5, 6. Bye. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew 5, 6. God promises that if you thirst and hunger for him and his word, he will deliver. No other God can deliver like that. And for more on what I've read, you can... I encourage you to listen to our program in the Word that comes out uh, twice a month here on Radio Cop Podcast. And in May, remember, we go one or two podcasts uh, a month also, uh, what will be called AWOL Monday. Couldn't make it to church? You're AWOL? You can pick it up here on Radio Cop Podcast. Well, my friends, we live in our crazy world We continue to navigate. And one of the things that our audience likes to navigate around is the Wise Guy series and Costa Nostra. People eat this stuff up. It is fascinating to many people. But we want everybody to know that in every story that we tell about Costa Nostra, there's never a happy ending. I could tell you right now, just like I could tell you the the weather prediction in Florida, every day it will be sunny, cloudy with a chance of showers and high humidity in Florida. In mob circles, it will always end in one or two things, death or jail. circles as Tommy Lucchese or Three Fingers Brown. He was born on December 1st, 1899 in Palermo, Sicily. He came to America in 1911 with his parents, settling in the section of Manhattan known as East Harlem. As a young man, he had an accident working in a machine shop that cut off his thumb and right, his right thumb and right forefinger leaving him with three fingers. And we'll get to the name, nickname, how he got that a little bit later. But you're starting to get the idea. He joined the street gang of 107th Street. It was called the 107th Street Gang in East Harlem. It was run by a guy by the name, or it was under the protection of a guy by the name of Giettano Tom Reyna. And... Tommy Lucchese would be a gang member in that gang. Not affiliated necessarily with the mob just yet, but it was like a AAA for up-and-coming mobsters. In 1920, upon being arrested for an auto theft, the police officer in Long Island went to fingerprint Tom, and he noticed, wait a minute, He's only got three digits. The thumb and forefinger are missing on the right hand. And he named him Three Fingers Brown under the famous Major League pitcher Mordecai Three Fingers Brown that pitched for the Chicago Cubs. Mordecai Brown's pitching career in the Major League would last from 1903 to 1916. Now, I'm sure Tommy Lucchese wasn't too particularly happy with the nickname the police officer gave him, but it did stick, never to his face, but behind his back, Three Fingers Brown was the nickname that a lot of people would use. For that car theft that he had, He was sentenced to three years, nine months, but he would end up doing 13 months in Sing Sing Prison. It was the beginning of his education in the criminal underworld. When Tommy was released from that little stint of 13 months, he jumped right in 
back with the 107th Street Gang. And but this time he's a little bigger, a little older, and he's gonna start laddering over to the Reina Gang or Mob. And there you'll get more instruction and grow. Now, one of the things that Tommy Lucchese had, he had some real influential friends at the time that nobody really knew that they were that inferential, but they would be later on. And who are they? Charlie Luciano, Meyer Lansky, Vito Genovese, Frank Costello. All these people were very close with Tommy Lucchese. Lucchese would go ahead and get involved with the Mafia prior to 1931. Remember, that's the date that we use when we do our Wise Guys series. 1931 is when the commission was formally created. But sometimes we got to go beyond that. And Thomas Lucchese is one of those figures that goes beyond it. And in 1930, during the the war, the Mafia War, Tommy Lucchese was up and coming, smart and influential. And him and his buddies, Charles Luciano and the rest of them, they decided to work together, even though they were on different mob clans, to get rid of the two bosses that were fighting this war because it was bad for business and they were just old and outdated anyway. So Tommy Lucchese had a lot to do with those assassinations. First Joe the boss and although Thomas Lucchese was not a shooter in that he didn't know it was going to happen, and he, he was currently working, working for Salvatore Maranzano. But he knew that after Joe the Boss would get his, Maranzano would be next. And Tommy Lucchese was his chief of staff. He was right there next to that boss, and he would have to set him up. And he started doing that immediately by notifying Sal Maranzano that he had heard that the IRS were going to send some agents to check the books in the office. Maranzano congratulated him for his intelligence, and he said, prepare the conditions. You know, get the phony books, get everything ready. But Tommy also told Maranzano, boss, I think it's important that nobody here be armed because if federal agents come find known felons with guns. This is going to get stupid. Maranzano immediately barked out the order. Everybody's to disarm until the agents get here. Soon enough, Meyer Lansky, Bugsy Siegel, Lucky Luciano, Frank Costello, Vito Genovese were preparing the next hit. And that would be Sal Salvatore Maranzano. Who let the agents in? Well, it was Tommy Lucchese. Problem was, they weren't any agents. They were hitmen. And they were mostly Jewish hitmen, so Marizano didn't even recognize them. Thought they were real agents, and remember, everybody was disarmed. Tom Lucchese would kind of give a head gesture who was Maranzano, and they killed him. The end of the war. The reward for Tommy Lucchese... Well, he didn't become a boss right away. He was placed under a gentleman by the name of Gaetano. And he was the underboss for his first boss, Tommy Reyna. Now, Tommy Reyna ends up dying in 1930. He was uh, shot, a gunshot blasted away. Remember, that was... They were shooting and blasting away, and then after that, stabilization came after the war, 1931, the end of it, when Luciano created the commission. So, Reina's underboss at the time was a guy by the name of Gagliano, like I said, and Gagliano would go from underboss to boss. 
and Tommy Lucchese would come in as underboss. So the family would be known as the Gagliano family. 1931, that's how it took off. But Gagliano wasn't very well liked. And as such, he decided to take a very low profile, especially with the other bosses, uh, Bonanno, Provaci, Mangano. He decided to take a, a low profile so the front boss or was his underboss that would deal with these other families and deal with his own family. Gagliano was fine with just collecting the money. Tommy did an outstanding job, made all the connections, and as such, his power was demonstrated during the lifespan of Gagliano when he decided not to attend a meeting in Havana, Cuba, 1946, the Havana Conference. He, Gagliano, would send Tommy Lucchese instead a major commission meeting dealing with all kinds of politics and Tommy Lucchese was at the head. It demonstrated to the other families and the other leaders, Tommy's going to be a, re- uh, a force to be reckoned with. Gagliano would die in 1951 of natural causes, and as such, the family would elect Tommy Lucchese as its boss. The commission would approve it. It was a rubber stamp. Why? Tommy had been running the family and for almost 20 years. And the real boss was hardly seen. Only Tommy would really see him. And we would later see this type of creational business plan in other families like the Genovese family. But Tommy was extremely intelligent, capable, and trustworthy. And that's why Gagliano felt that he could leave him at the helm. And most importantly, the envelopes kept on coming. Tommy knew he had to build alliances. He also knew that at the right time, he would end up being boss anyway. So he made an alliance with two specific bosses that were not bosses at the time. This is the type of visionary that Tommy Lucchese was. He made his alliances with Carlo Gambino and Vito Genovese. Both of them respected underbosses and consularies. Gambino was a consulary and then briefly and then an underboss and becomes boss under Albert Anastasia later on and Vito was underboss and then was an underboss and was a capo and nobody really understood what position, but he wanted to be boss under Luciano and Frank Costello, and we know what happened there. They both elevated to power, Gambino and Genovese. So Thomas Lucchese had the vision to see these are the men I have to network with. And as a result, his business dealings were amazing. His political uh, dealings out of this world. Thomas Lucchese was probably up there just neck and neck with Frank Costello, which was known as the prime minister. But the only difference is that Tommy was a gangster. Frank was a little bit more of a politician. So therefore, Tommy would be a lot more respected within the street mentality. Tommy knew how to handle himself. And one thing he was old school, low profile. Remember, his boss hid. So Tommy knew how to go underneath the radar. July 13th, 1967, Tommy would die at the age of 67 from a brain tumor. He was such a visionary, he had it all spelled out when he wasn't ready uh, to go. I'm sure he wanted to stay, but he had to go. 
death was right around the corner and Tommy Lucchese had picked his successor and that would be uh, Anthony Ducks Corallo. And the Lucchese family, which still bears his name today, would grow leaps and bounds. We can talk about a lot of bosses, but none are really understood with the caliber of a Thomas Lucchese because he was only like five foot two and he had rim glasses. He wasn't very menacing when you looked at him, but he was cunning, smart, brave, and he'd kill you in a heartbeat. He made Costa Nostra. He was one of the clay masters building it and making it. As I said today, that organization still bears his name. Not as effective as when he was around. We're going to travel into that Lucchese family and we're going to look at their heights and their downfalls and where they are. This will probably be a lot of our shows for 2021. But we wanted to start off with Three Fingers Brown. Remember, not a name that nobody would dare say to his face. The power, the money that he had was amazing. He also had his daughter married Carlo Gambino's son. So those relations were even stronger. Old school mafioso, old school. He knew how to navigate, but he also knew how to be stealth. Today, there's a lot of new mafia leaders that are looking at the book that Thomas Lucchese formed, the business plan, and they're copying it to the T. Under wraps, quiet, and nobody knows. Now flamboyant, now look at me, no bling bling. It's the only way that Costa Nostra will exist by flying underneath the radar. Tommy Lucchese would build a fortune in the garment district. He made his working relationship with Jewish mobsters grabbing a foothold in there and with uh, Louis Lupke and, and he would get into the garment district in New York so strong and so powerful he corrupted the trucking industry that belonged to the garment industry and the unions and everything and then he cut his people in the alliances he made Paulo Gambino and Vito Genovese. Gambino benefited tremendously from his relationship with Tommy Lucchese. So much could be said from a boss that was so low profile. As we start to travel into the Lucchese crime family, you're going to see the bond that they had, the intelligence they had, how they worked, strong connection of crews, and how they made money. And a lot of it was through controlling unions and labor, trucking, and of course, the concrete business that would come later on as well. Thomas Three Fingers Brown Lucchese lived an ordinary life, wasn't very flamboyant, five foot one, two, whatever it was, rimmed glasses, and he wasn't much feared when you looked at him if you didn't know who he was, but he would create an empire that still exists today. And 
one of the attributes that he had is he was old school. The rule was the rule, and the rule had to be followed. So although they were in the drug business prior to the 1950s, Tommy would not have that after the ruling was made. Yes, there were a lot of Lucchese guys that were dealing drugs. We know that. You don't have to give me nasty show notes. You don't have to write nasty notes. I know that. But it doesn't mean that Tommy would allow it. He knew that a lot of the guys that were doing it were from the, the past when that decision with no drugs that was done in 1951 or 57, I believe that it was, that those guys were in the business long before. So Tommy kind of played stupid. But uh, don't get it twisted. If it would... If he had to, he'd eliminate that problem immediately. Tommy never got along with and always had a good eye on um, the Bonanno family and the Provacci family. For whatever reason, he never really wanted to do business with them. Of course, you have to under the commission rules, but he created his own alliances. And mostly that alliance was with Carlo Gambino because we know that Je- Vito Genovese would end up going to prison. And uh, and even though he was in prison, he was a boss, but mostly that relationship with was Carlo Gambino. So we can c- continue to look at many more things that are going to come on these uh Wise Guys series, as you know, we uh, are also going to do other things on Wise Guys series. At the Lucchese family, we're going to start looking at outlaw motorcycles. That's right, one percenters, and we're going to attack that. People love to hear about those one percenters, and that should be sometime towards the end of summer. We're going to dive into... The Outlaw Motorcycles and the One Percenters. Up next uh, from this show, February 24th, overcrowding in jails, yes or no? You can't have it both ways. Which one is it? That's episode 196. Again, as a reminder, episode 197 that will come out on the 27th on Saturday will be delayed one day. That is The title of that show is Thomas Swole, Why We Need to Listen. You will love what you hear about Thomas Swole. So keep that on your show notes to look out for. As always, it is my honor and pleasure to be your host on Raider Cop Podcast. Continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community the law enforcement agencies that serve you, and the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike, and I'm out.